This is why you can't drink because the continuity is all out. It's like, where was I in that last line? There's a club, ABC, anything but Chardonnay. Perhaps you're a member, perhaps you're the president of it. Here are three reasons that you can mention at your next meeting, followed by three more that might have you reconsider your hatred. Reason number one that Chardonnay is the worst. Because so many people know the name Chardonnay, the restaurants are betting on you to pay a premium, betting that you're going to go with what you know, rather than branch out and try something different, like a Sirtico, which is a dry and zesty wine from Greece. Reason number two that Chardonnay is the worst. It's less aromatic than Sauvignon Blanc or Riesling, so it can taste simply of acidic green apples and not much else. In case you're wondering, yes, I will be drinking this wine. Stay tuned. Reason number three that Chardonnay is the worst. Not all bottles will say if they're oaked. And if they are oaked, then it's likely like licking a piece of wood. Now, the flip side. All right, reason number one to love Chardonnay. So we feel as though restauranteurs are going to be charging this enormous premium because we know the wine, so we'll pay anything just to have what we know. But now, mathematic time. Restauranteurs use various equations to work out how much they're going to charge per glass. Here's one example. A bottle is $40. Let's say for argument's sake, they're going to get four glasses out of that $40. They charge $10 per glass. 10 times four is your $40 for the bottle. That's great, assuming you sell all four glasses. With Chardonnay, it's kind of a guarantee. It sells really easily. But now, if you have a wine like our Assyrtiko from Greece, it's lesser known. Fewer people want to branch out and try something new. So it's still $40 for the bottle of Assyrtiko. But now, instead of charging $10, only selling maybe two glasses and losing $20, they charge $20 per gloss. That means they only need to sell two glasses to make up the cost of that wine. I hope you were with me for that numbers journey. The bottom line is, don't think that just because you know it, they're going to milk you for what you have. They are milking you for what you have, it's a 300% increase, but they're milking you for everything, not just Chardonnay. Also, this is more for by the gloss. By the bottle is a very different Rain Man type equation. Reason number two to love Chardonnay. Because Chardonnay is a less aromatic grape, it's a bit of a blank canvas. Chardonnay is just more malleable. So the winemaker can apply multiple techniques for his own personal stamp, things like batonnage or lease, or my personal favorite, MLF. This calls for a technical 12. Malolactic fermentation. Malic acid occurs in green apples, which gives it that tart bite. The malic acid in grapes is converted into lactic acid, which is what gives it that buttery, creamy taste. <laughs> if you'd like to know more about this sort of thing, please click through to our technical talks video, where I talk a lot slower. All of this to say is that the winemakers can bring down the acid, increase the richness, make the wine just feel bigger in your mouth. But, if you are wanting something more fresh and zippy, then Unwooded is your team. Which leads on to the next and final point. Reason number three to, reason number three. Reason number three to love Chardonnay, the labels. Now, whether you are on team zippy and fresh unoaked, or if you are on team big and buttery oaked, the labels often do not say whether they are oaked or unoaked. And that's something that both parties can get behind. In annoyance. Here are three and a half ways to find out if your wine is oaked or unoaked just by looking at it. This is the most vague and tricky, so I will begin with it, is the area. If your wine is from a cool climate like Chablis in France or Marlborough in New Zealand, New Zealand, then it is likely unoaked. Unless it's a Grand or Premier Cru from Chablis, and then it is likely oaked. Way number two to see if it's oaked or unoaked the price. A wine aged or fermented in a barrel generally will cost more than a wine aged or fermented in a receptacle like stainless steel. Just by the way, barrels cost between $300 and $4,500. That's a little bit less in euros. The cost of the barrel, the labor, and the storage, this adds on between one and $5 per bottle. Number three, in two parts, appearance. 3A. The closure. If your wine is using a screw cap, 
then this generally means it is unoaked, meant to be drunk young and not cellared. But if your wine is using a cork, then the opposite. It likely is oaked and you can keep it for a little bit. 3B, the bottle. If your bottle is slim, then it is likely unoaked. But if it is a fat bottle, it's likely oaked. The summary of this, if you are more team zippy, zesty, citrus with some exotic fruits, then go for unoaked. Go for a wine from a cooler climate, slightly less costly sometimes, screw cap and a thinner bottle. If you're wanting something a bit bigger, more buttery, toasty than you want, oaked. Go for warmer climate, more costly sometimes, cork and a fatter bottle. These are not foolproof, but it's a good place to start. And now it is a very thrilling moment, for me at least. Dun dun! Where did this gloss come from? <laughs> Editing magic. This is a white burgundy, also known as a Chardonnay. I have no idea what to expect. This was the only sort of oaked looking Chardonnay at the store that I went to. So we'll find out together. But I'm an oak girl. I'm hoping that this gives me some toasty notes. Ugh. So my final thoughts for you. The best wine is the one that you like the most. It's that simple. So try different wines, see if you are more of an oaked or unoaked girl, see if you maybe genuinely don't like Chardonnay, but don't just dislike it because it's cool to be in a club. I just find Chardonnay such a wonderful wine to drink. There's different climates and different techniques used all over the world. So wherever you go, it's going to be some different iteration of that grape. So let's see what this iteration tastes like. Oh God, it smells way too fresh for my liking. Oh no. Oh God. It's a no for me, dog. 2019 Pasquier de Vin. I mean, I wasn't, didn't have very high hopes and I was right to not do that. Yeah, some stone fruit, citrus, like a whisper of vanilla. Not enough for me. And uh, what do they say about it? Yellow, <laughs> slightly golden in color with emerald glints. Sure. Generous and persistent on the palate, this burgundy Chardonnay reveals a mineral touch and a lively crisp finish. That should have given me all the red flags that I needed. I don't like a lively, crisp finish. If you do, I've got a wine for you. Don't you worry, I will drink this bottle. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to know more about Chardonnay, South African Chardonnay in particular, please click through to the video in the description below. Please click through to the video below. Hey, goodbye. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed yourself and learned a little something. Little. <laughs> if you would like to know more about South African Chardonnay, please click the video link below. I will see you next time. Ta-ta!